One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mike Henning here coming to you today with an up the neck version of the classic Earl Scruggs tune Home Sweet Home. I did a beginner version of this in the past that taught kind of more of the, the traditional down the neck version and I had a request if I could do an up the neck version. It's a really good chord position study. Again, I think this is one of those songs that seems a little bit scarier. Even the down the neck version seems a little bit scarier at first. You're moving around the neck quite a bit. But if you understand the chord positions and shapes behind it, it really makes it a lot easier to play. We're going to use the bar shape, the F shape, and the D shape a lot moving around in this song. And the other thing we're going to do in this up the neck version is throw in a couple of little melodic licks, add a little bit of spice, add a little bit of flavor, and then revert back to those classic Scruggs licks. That's something I really like to do. All right, we'll break down the A part and the B part, just how I played it at the beginning. I'll show you all the left hand and right hand moves needed to play the song. And again, we'll break down those chord positions so you can get familiar with them. Hopefully start using them in other songs as well. Let's start breaking down Home Sweet Home in the key of C. All right, let's start breaking down this up the neck version of Home Sweet Home. So we're actually in drop C tuning for this lesson. I dropped my low four string down to a C to get that nice octave and get that low, right, that low C note. But I will preface this by saying that actually in the solo, we're never actually gonna hit that low C note because we're playing a solo way up the neck. So you actually don't need to retune it if you don't want to or if you're just feeling lazy. But I do like retuning. It's a little ode to Earl Scruggs. He did his version in drop C tuning. It will affect the backup a little bit that we'll break down later in the lesson, but just kind of know that you, you can tune down to drop C if you want to, or you don't have to. It actually won't affect the solo, but I like having that low note. It adds some nice overtones as well. All right, let's jump into the lesson. All right, so we have a little two measure intro. So I would only play the two measure intro if I was starting the song from scratch. If if the song is already going and you're playing backup, we'll just want to play the pickup of measure two only that we'll break down in a second. But if you're starting the song, it's a nice little way to set the tempo. We're going to be up here in our C, our F position C chord up at the ninth, eighth, and tenth frets. Remember, our ring finger could normally go here, right? But remember, we're in drop C tuning, so that's where that really does kind of come into play that finger no longer works. So when I'm in drop C tuning, I'm just gonna kind of play up on the top three strings a lot of times. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna do a pinch and then the foggy mountain roll. So your thumb's gonna come down and then you're gonna do five, two, one, five. So you have one. I would also probably move my right hand a little bit closer to the neck to sweeten up that tone. It's kind of personal preference, but I like to play up here a little bit more when I'm playing up the neck. It just sweetens it up a little bit for my taste. And then, th and then in measure two, we're going to hit the 10th fret. And then we're going to take our ring finger that's not being used and we're going to slide from essentially 10 to 14 and then we're going to play the 13th fret on the second string and then the 12th fret on the first string. We're basically going from this C shape to this C shape here and we're just using our third finger to slide up. So we, we play the 10th fret on beat one and then you have two, three, four. So that's our pickup and that's what I would play if I was playing backup and the song was already started, I would just play 
like that instead of adding measure one. Just just so you know that if you're in a jam session and the song's going, measure one would actually be, the pickup would be a little bit too long. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so like I said, we're sliding up. And then we're gonna play one of my favorite roles for, for highlighting a melody on the first string. The melody is mainly gonna be on the first and second strings for this arrangement. And we're gonna play what I call the reverse forward roll. It's the opposite of the forward reverse roll. So we're up in this. So you slide up and then we're gonna put our ring finger on the 14th fret to just make this C chord here. So I've got 12, 13, and 14. That's the position I'm working out of. And I'm just gonna leave my first finger off and we're gonna play middle index thumb. So five, or excuse me, one, two, five are the strings. And then we're gonna hit the first string again. And then we go forward, five, two, one, five. So it's kind of the opposite of the forward reverse roll. You go backwards first, and then you hit the uh, first string, and then you go forward. What's cool about that though, is you get this cool syncopation on the first string of one and four, one and four. So you get this kind of on beat, off beat thing going with the, the first string, which is really cool for the melody. So I'll just kind of loop that measure. You have. I might kind of accent my middle finger of my right hand there. So we're going to be using that roll a lot. So practice that one if you're not familiar with. That's a really good roll for highlighting melodies on the first string, like I said. And then measure four, we're gonna put our pinky on the 15th fret, which is gonna make this F chord, just like a C to F here. Same thing, we're just doing that up here now. Right, so then we're gonna do that same roll. We're gonna go backwards, use the fifth string to travel up to this F chord up here. Basically the same thing we just did from C to C here. Now we're doing from F to F here. So that's all we're doing. We're taking those positions F shape to D shape and then F shape F chord to D shape F chord. That's all we're doing. And that roll works really well because we get to use the fifth string. So we have So let's put those two together. We'll skip the pickup and then we'll add the pickup just to practice it. So you have I switch back to my middle finger and third finger there. That's just what feels easiest for me. You could also just slide that finger up. That I like using my pinky there. Again, this is just what feels comfortable for me. Use the fifth string right here. And then we're gonna go back down to the 17th fret with these two fingers, which is basically this C bar chord here. So it's really important to understand the positions. That's gonna help the solo make a lot more sense. So we're going C to C, F to F, and then we're going from this C back to this C here is what we're about to do. That's the section we're at now. So imagine those chord shapes in your mind, even though we're not playing, we're really just playing the top two strings of those chords. Like that, so we're going. really gonna help you make sense of the solo, like I said. So we're here, we hit the 17th fret, and then we kind of slide from 16 to 17, just give it a little attitude. We're gonna do the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. Slide pretty quick there, it's kind of just a little grace note. And the other thing you wanna be careful is don't bend that string up. It's easier to bend the strings out of tune when you're higher up the neck. They don't have quite as much tension. And then we get, go down to this 13th fret. So we have. Classic Scrug style lick. You might've done that down here in like G. Something like that, right? It's just a, it's just a bar shape to, to a D shape lick, right? And then we're actually gonna slide right back up. So take your, your second finger and slide from 14 up to 17. So you have 
and then I do a little backwards roll. So you have very scrug style there. And then we take this shape, so we're in a C bar chord, and we use this fifth string to slide it down to the twelfth fret, which is like a G bar chord. We're going to do that reverse forward roll. And then put your pinky on the 14th fret and roll forward. So you have... So let's break down the melody quick. So the melody is basically... And then... Like that. That's the part we're about to break down. So... That's kind of like the melody in its simplest form, right? So we're just using those shapes, right? C to C, F to F, C to C, back up to C, and now down to G. So we have... And then slide this shape up to 15 and 15, which is... It's really like a G7 chord right here. And we're just playing the top two strings and we're going to do a reverse roll. And then take your third finger off and play the 14th fret. So let's play those two measures together at 7 and 8. We have... I'll do it really slow. Use the fifth string to travel. And I... Again, I'm kind of accenting my middle finger there to highlight that first string. That's the melody. And then here's a classic Scruggs lick that's a little bit hard to tab out to get the exact sound, but we're going to take our middle finger slide from 15 to 17, and then put your ring finger on the 17th fret of the high string. So again, we're sliding back up to that C bar chord now, and we're going to go... I slide up, hit the 17th fret, and then I kind of roll forward while I'm bending. Probably easier to just kind of try to mimic the sound. The other thing I might do there is slide back a little bit toward the bridge to give that a little more attitude. And then I might move my hand up to sweeten it up once I land the lick. So that's what we're doing there. So we have... right there that's basically the end of the a part the first time and then we're going to repeat that a part so let's play that whole thing here we go from the beginning <laughs> 